how to use debt to upgrade your township four room house to become an asset that makes you money. Shapunja I'm going to make sure that this is a very short video. I'll go straight to the point. Thank you very much for tuning in. Four roomed house, a case, We've lived there for many years. Sadly, other families fight for the house when the parents sadly get to pass on. Um, if there's girls or ladies in the house, buy a shati or buy a say all goes well. If there's men, usually they'll do well and go buy their own homes. But we all know that it doesn't happen like that for most families, right? A lot of um, people, you'll find that they might just come back home. Normal will be out. Because there's never a place like home. Family first. But you are always welcome back home. It's your home. No It's the villages. You are always welcome back home. And you will be at home with your siblings or with your other family members or relatives. But on the title deed, who owns the home? Maybe your parents. Say you inherit that home. What do you do after you inherit that home? You can basically go to the bank, borrow, use debt to renovate these four-roomed houses into a 10-room um, house, depending on how big your yard is, into a 12-room um, um, house, into a 15-room house. I've even seen some home, homes at Tembisa that are 20-room homes converted from a four-roomed house. What do you do? Usually it'll cost you anything from 40 to 50 grand um, per room to renovate. Other people might say it's a bit less. Other people might say it's a little bit more, but that's pretty much mostly the average. I would say and maybe in other townships around as well. If you want to build 10 rooms, it means you're going to have to what, pay 50 grand per room? Yes, other people can build cheaper, but you want to get the best labor you want to make sure that you spend on the finishings. You want to make sure that you give them a bathroom, you give them a nice shower or um, a stove, a mini kitchen there. They've got their bedroom. They've got a, um, a built-in odrop, ondrop. <laughs> and then, you know, they're able to put in their TV, their furniture there as well. And um, it can pretty much be like an apartment. It can be like you're at a suburb, Marcocas. You know, you make sure that you give them that experience. And then you make sure that you give them Wi-Fi. You make sure that you make it clean and neat. You make sure that security is on point. You think of things like cameras. You think of things like electric fencing. You think of things like high walls. You think of things like the best bricks. And prices keep changing all the time. That's why prices keep going high. And that's why I will choose an average of about 50,000 per room. Say now you want to build 10 rooms. What are you going to do? You're going to borrow from the bank 500,000. When you borrow from the bank 500,000, to um, do 10 rooms. Um, those 10 rooms, when the home is done and renovated, remember also, guys, be cautious not to be greedy. Other people become greedy. They want to build 20 rooms when the space can actually have rather 12 rooms and maybe the remaining space, make sure that your tenants have got good parking so they can park their cars. They know their cars are secured inside the yard. They know that the fences are high, electric fencing, there's Wi-Fi and there's cameras, security cameras around your area. You basically give them a suburban experience. That's why you're going to have to be not stingy when it comes to spending per room or spending for the entire development. And then as soon as you're done, you're going to get tenants. Yes, other people can say, room in Johannesburg, in the Johannesburg townships, unless that room, it's not that top notch. Yes, there are rooms for 800 or the garage for 1.2, 1.5. Two rooms are viable. My Eguruleni, so it, so it. They're even taking rental of 2.5, 3,000. Menika Slame Hospital View. It's just right next to a hospital. So a lot of the people that um, would look for accommodation are nurses, are doctors, and they just work next to the hospital. They don't want to go stay far. They want to stay around the hospital. So I even know people, go check out an interview that I did with Witness Mdaga on the Hustlers Corner. He picks up a rental of 4,000 rands per tenant because he gave them a great experience of an amazingly um, 
renovated, top-notch, state-of-the-art suburban experience. Kokasi, Ko Hospital View, is able to pick up four grand per room. So the more you want to pick up more money per room, the more you must make sure the quality of your renovation is top-notch, the finishings and everything they're going to have to need in there. And then you can either decide to charge them parking separate or to charge them Wi-Fi separate. Um, or you can just put it into the rental. So they just get complimentary Wi-Fi. So they just get complimentary parking. And you can tell them who to prepare, per tenant is one car, you know? And then if you've done 10 rooms and you're picking, you picking up, say, 2,000 rents per room per rental per month, that's around 20K. If you're picking up 3,000 per room per rental per month, that's about 30K for 10 rooms. If you're picking up 4,000 like Witness Mdaga is in Tembisa, then it means you're making 40K. So now you've turned your inheritance of Ilala, Lasikaya, Elagini, on inheritor from Guba Zalba, Komklambe, and Abantuana Bagin in Vumelene to actually do this. And then you guys, what you've done as a family, collectively, you have basically created an asset that brings you guys money. Even if you guys, maybe you've got your own homes or you've got your own places where you stay, but you know, you've agreed with your siblings to turn this home, this house in Kuleleguyo, into an asset. And then you pick up that monthly rental to service the loan from the bank, to service that, five, that 500,000 that you borrowed from the bank. And then what do you do? You rinse and repeat. You rinse and repeat. You make sure that you're a good payer of, of, the, of, 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 of the bank. You service the bond correctly. You pay them every month. And if you can, you pay them a little more so that you can squash that loan quicker. While the home, you've upgraded the value of your home. It already has collateral because it's no longer that four room that is worth 750,000. It's no longer that four room that is worth 800,000, 900,000, 1 million. You've now turned it into an asset of 10 rooms that are bringing in monthly income for you, for your siblings, for your family, your children. You've literally actually created generational wealth. That's how easy it is to create generational wealth using debt. And that's what they have done all these years. They do it in the suburbs. They do it in Kokasi. They do it in the commercial spaces, go to shopping center. They do it got student accommodation. They do it everywhere. And once we can start mastering this Kokasi, and a lot of us are already doing it Kokasi, kudos to all of you. I'm so proud of you, my brothers and sisters. Turning our, our old four-room homes, they know Rukhole Tukotona Kokasi, upgrading them into a townhouse suburban experience kokasi and get the tenants and you vet the tenants so you don't get people who are going to give you ah ish ah ish what's in a girl what over this month then that's called no patala rent and you know but i rent this month you make sure you vet your um your tenants just like i was making you guys an example about um where I'm from at Tembisa Hospital, it's just right next to the hospital. So you're getting tenants like nurses and doctors and it's people that you know have got a salary at the end of every month. And then sometimes you don't even have to deal with them directly. You can put in a, uh, an agency to deal with that for you. And other people are already doing that even in the suburbs. And then what do you do? You collect this monthly rental to maintain not only the bond. To, remember that money is not yours with your siblings. It's not yours, especially the first renovation of the property. Remember to renovate that house. So you must service that loan and you must maintain this new development. So you must have a landlord. One of the rooms there that you're going to have to put in there is the landlord. They must sleep in one of those rooms. So you're not going to be picking up rental income from that one room because your, your landlord stays there so that you're able to negotiate with them the salary. You pay them, okay, a good salary. Plus you give them accommodation to stay in the area. Plumbing. When things get broken, electricity, you get um, barking an electrician that you've got to deal with so that these people, when they've got problems with any of that, they know who to call. And you also get them a DSTV or Netflix or any type of a technician or IT guy so that when they've got IT issues, they know who to call. And then you make sure there's good parking, there's security cameras. I mean, I've even seen some places in Tembisa where they've got like a rooftop. In a little green grass room, that artificial green grass. In a little muddy bright stain, eh? Gorgabo muddy, 
New Year Eve, Kapagadi Christmas, Kapagadi holidays, or Madi sixteen, by it or Banna Daso, Corbeira Brida, Nzava Fisana Mabo, Nada, Nzava Nadi Mofa, Badi Desha, Dagadi Vodka, Gadi Biliato, Nzava Nadi Sidata, Tata DJ Diran, Nzava Mutual Let's Mo Sound on Da, Makoya Bering Sider, Nzava Yuna Daso, Kurati came but the first time, a cocas, Bas Promele Bas first time, Nikas, Guru Top, Ubakai Isabab, Elokshin. Because as long as the stinge, I mean, Romelu annual poang a 15 steen, or your Romelu annual poang a 20 steen, you went out because you, know, you didn't become greedy and you didn't become selfish. You went out and said, I will spend for my tenants so that I give them a good quality room that has got everything. And I give them a development that has got everything. It's secure, it's got Wi Fi, it's got everything. And even other things that you might get out there that are good deals as far as you're a business person is, is concerned, you must always think of them. Go, okay, cool. Why don't I bring this for my tenants? I've got 10 tenants, and I can even speak to all 10 of them and say, guys, why don't we all form some form of a scheme? Or whatever it might be, it'll depend also with the type of relationship that you build with them as time goes, and depending on how long they're all going to stay, in, stay there. But then other people, most um, owners, never really get to be seen by um, the tenants most of the time because maybe they're busy with other things. They get to deal on a day-to-day -day basis with the landlord who stays there, who guards the place, who makes sure that um, they implement the rules of the place. And maybe you can even have a kitchen for them. You know, it's up to them or buy, buy take like Rosaya Boona and they can just cook or whatever. Or you can even have a kitchen for them. You cater for them. There can be a breakfast there. Or even if it's not just only for them, you can turn it into the other side. Let's level let's start to call the Ibula so that kitchen, or you can turn it into a spaza shop or a food place. Come on, maybe like come on, come on, to have like a daso, pavile and a pantle. Then you even put in like some sort of a carport where people can buy from the outside and actually sit in the outside, but safely. And you know that you're attracting a good crowd. It does not even have to be alcohol. You don't have to sell alcohol, but you know, regular the plate. So now. You've not only turned your four-room house into just an asset that brings in money through rental monthly income, but you have also created some sort of a mini restaurant. Mini beautiful spaza shop, says Lenko private school. Mini puchar. Mini whatever idea that you might have to be able to sell to the community members as well. So now that landlord person does not get bored. Where they're just only sitting and cutting the place, now they've got a business where they're working in. So you hire them to not only look after the property and the tenants, they also sell at the store. You can even hire one or two more people depending on how big the restaurant is and how well it's doing. Then it can service not only the tenants, when they want to buy there, because it's not like they're always going to want to buy food some more. You know, sometimes they want to eat whatever from elsewhere. And then sometimes they want to do maybe Uber Eats. Sometimes they want to eat around the Kasi, or sometimes they just want to cook. But at least you must just be there as an option that also services the community. So now, this four-roomed house is also an asset with a business that services the community that brings in extra income daily. This restaurant or Buchari or Chisanyam or Kawash or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Kawash because maybe the tenants they don't want noise. They don't want people are always outside and you know you make it nice and respectable and quiet and respectable. But even the restaurant vibe as well, to avoid a lot of things, what I've seen a lot of um, owners do is they don't sell alcohol. So that at least they are able to say, Rakwa laka eight, kapa rakwa laka seven. So that people and you make it respectable, you make sure that it's secure and it's the nice crowd that you attract. So now you've got a business that's bringing in an extra income. Now you've turned the four room house into an asset that's collecting rental in income monthly. You service the bond to the bank and then you pay the expenses of maintaining this space. You pay the expenses of running the business, that restaurant. And then you pay the expenses of getting stock and all those things, that food that you cook there, and in paying the employees that work in that business as well, without having to pop out anything from the pockets of yourself and um, your siblings. And then you can just rinse and repeat. You can take this development, build another one in another kasi around your area. In another kasi, you can go to Katrohon, you can go to Tsakane, you can go to Soweto, Mabopane, Sesheho, Umlazi. You can grow as much as you want to. That is if you are responsible in running the first one, you and your siblings. Because most likely, a lot of our four-roomed houses, Renale Banabako Hayaker, 
So it's always better to speak to them first and consult them first. Or the elders, maybe the elders are still alive even, where you guys create it and turn it into a family business. But as long as you are able going to find alternative accommodation for um, the elders who are, still, who are staying in the house, maybe some of the rooms, it's them. Maybe by, by two, they take the two rooms, you only rent out the 17 rooms because the three rooms is the, the, the people who are staying in that four room before and then maybe the, um, the landlord. And then you only rent out maybe the 17 rooms. Or if maybe you're building 10 rooms, you only rent out the seven rooms. So um, that's just uh, an idea that I think I can share with my brothers and sisters out there. And I hope that this information changes somebody else's life out there. And by the way, as I close the video, remember if you service the loan well with the bank, they are now going to come back and even offer you more loans or they're going to offer you overdrafts. You see, I'm not a financial advisor. You must consult professionals. But what I can tell you is, what a lot of rich people have been able to do over the years is to use debt from the bank to create wealth. Do the same. Do it now. Especially using your credit. Make sure that you never mess up your credit. Make sure you don't have any judgments so you're able to borrow from the bank.